Did you know that the average gardener spends over 60 hours per week doing jobs that nature will do for free? Wait, hold on. I think that's true. Oh, maybe not. Okay, I don't think that's true at all. But hey, did you know that 78.3% of all garden-based statistics are actually made up on the spot? You don't have to do all of the work in your garden. You can let nature do the work. You just have to know when to either step back or when to step in. So today, we're gonna to be talking about regenerative gardening principle number one, let nature do the work. And yes, I will also be releasing ladybugs. Stay tuned. This principle is all about shifting your mindset. You're not the boss of your garden. You're a part of the team. Nature is full of specialists. Pollinators that fertilize your flowers, predators that keep pest populations in check, and decomposers that return nutrients to the soil, if you recognize who's doing the work. One of my students once released ladybugs then sprayed the larva a few weeks later because they thought they were pests. They didn't know what they were looking at. When you learn nature's language, the garden starts to look very different. This was the very first principle of regeneration written by John Lyle, who founded the Lyle Center. I kept this principle in my framework because it honors that lineage and because it works. It also reminds me of Masanobu Fukuoka, the Japanese farmer and philosopher behind the One Straw Revolution. He used to call himself a lazy gardener. But what he really meant was this. The more we try to control every aspect of the garden, the more responsibility we take on. We become the decomposer, the fertilizer, the pest control, the pollinators, all of it. But when we step back and invite nature into these roles, the garden begins to manage itself. And that starts with trust. You plant the flower, but you trust the bee. You compost the scraps, but you trust the worm. When you let nature do the work, your garden becomes more resilient. You don't have to micromanage every aphid, every weed, or every yellowing leaf. That means fewer synthetic sprays, less soil disturbance, and more time spent observing. The soil food web is one of the best examples of this. It's the underground ecosystem, bacteria, fungi, insects, that keeps your soil alive and thriving. There's a whole community beneath your feet, but you have to give it room to work. So how do you actually do this? Start by letting things grow a little wild. Leave early spring weeds like dandelions. They're some of the first food sources for pollinators. Skip the overcleaning. Fallen leaves, they're insulation for the soil, not trash. Stop and observe before reacting. If something's eating your plant, try asking, who's eating the plant? and who's eating them. And please, don't spray a pesticide just because you saw a hole in a leaf. If you don't know what caused the damage, how can you know that you're fixing the problem? In regenerative gardening, observation always comes before action. Here's a bonus tip. Avoid tilling whenever possible. It disrupts fungal networks. Instead, use straw or chop-and-drop mulch to feed the soil and keep moisture in while keeping weeds down. Now, here is one of my favorite ways to let nature lend a hand. Beneficial insects. These little guys are great at hunting down soft-bodied pests, especially aphids. When you release ladybugs, do it in the early evening when it's cooler. Lightly mist the plants first to give them something to drink and encourage them to stick around. But don't expect a miracle. 
Ladybugs aren't mercenaries. <laughs> They're guests. If your garden doesn't have habitat or food, they'll pack their bags and fly away. Treat them well and they'll work wonders. Letting nature do the work doesn't mean that you don't do any work in your garden. It means knowing what not to do and when to do the right thing at the right time. Next week, we're going to talk about our regenerative gardening principle number two, use knowledge as power. I'm gonna give you some great tips on how to deal with pests, including a couple of ways to identify what's going on in the garden and some resources for best management practices. Until then, what do you do to let nature do the work in your garden? Share it down below in the comments and I'll see you next week. Seventy-eight percent of worms believe in reincarnation, but only twelve percent want to come back as worms. Cilantro plants detect judgment, especially from people who think that they taste like soap. One in four tomatoes whispers secrets if you harvest them after midnight. The average gardener loses 6.3 hours annually, staring blankly at compost, wondering if they too will one day break down and become useful. A single backyard generates enough joy to power a mid-sized raccoon house party. Is that right? The average aphid has commitment issues. 96% of statistics in garden videos are emotionally true, but factually suspicious. That includes this one, especially this one. Wait, where's the camera? Oh. <laughs> Mulch spreads faster if you complain about your ex. Fun fact, I have a degree in this, which is really very deeply concerning. Yeah, and somehow they still let me teach this professionally. Hello, little friend. Do you think I'll get fired if my boss sees this? <laughs>